Even they're big Star Wars guys. I asked Who Scotty. Who dressed up as Lando as a kid, dude? dude I, I uh, who did? Yeah. Wow. I asked. Uh, I asked uh, Starty. I was like, "You like Star Wars, Starty?" He looks so slowly. He goes, "What do you think?" And I said, "Starty, you're more like me than you think you are." I watched Matlock growing up. <laughs> hey, Matlock was a good show. The reruns, the reruns hit. No, but you know, I would say this. Like, for example, I went in very skeptic on Barbie, the movie Barbie. Barbie was awesome. I heard Barbie was good. It was really good. I don't know it. if it's for kids per se because I, I think it's got a lot of adult material, but like. I didn't. I mean, Barbie's a quote unquote franchise from a toy, but they they had a whole new spin on it, and I thought it was it was awesome. I thought it was really well written, well done. It was one of my like pleasant surprises so, of watching so, movies. So this four hundred eight text before we get to Sam Gordon of the SF Chronicle. Oh wait, I'm asking if he's a Star Wars guy, and if he is, I I got respect for him, no problem. Some people just don't have the same artistic vision and aren't culture enough, so they won't understand you, Shasky. You love the original, but appreciate the attempt to replicate, which is basically what you were trying to say about the Golden State Warriors. Yes. Huh? There you go. But it just took some, I mean, you went all these. Uh, great point, Shasky. I don't mean to, I don't want to sound like a bully here because I know that's what people think. Uh, Sam Gordon, SF Chronicle. Are you a Star uh, Wars fan, yeah, are you Sam? Star Wars Let's fan? get to know you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, not particularly, fellas. Not particularly. Hey, you know what, Sam? I like you even better now. I can't. Hey, when I see you at the Air Chase Center. <laughs> no, we're not flushing, Sam. We're not flushing, Sam. Sidoni, I just. No, Sam. Chef's I guess. love you even more. You know what, Sam? Let's just book you for a weekly right now. Matter of fact, how about you become our third host here on the Morning Roll, Sam? Well, for, for, since we want to get to know you, you don't like Star Wars, which so stocks up in my book. Uh, where uh, you come I, from, I, man? I very much appreciate it. Yeah, where where you come from, man? Because you're new on the beat. All of a sudden, I see this guy, Sam Gordon, right for the chronic. I'm like, who the hell is that? So, where you come from, man? Tell us about yourself. Uh, well, first and foremost, guys, happy Tuesday. Very much appreciate you uh, welcoming me on the program. Uh, I was uh, born and raised in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Went to went to college at the University of Minnesota. Was there a couple years after graduation, working a you know a, a few different jobs, part time and uh, freelance for the St. Paul Pioneer Press, working with Sport Radar, mm. uh, and then uh, moved over to Las Vegas uh, for seven for a seven year stint of the Las Vegas Review Journal, um, and covered a little bit of everything there. Chronicled, uh, you know, was 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 on the ground when as the city uh, really transformed into a pro sports market. So I had the chance to uh, cover the Raiders and kind of the the emergence of the NFL in Vegas, uh, the Las Vegas Aces, of course the sweet science of professional boxing and then, uh, and then UNLV and, and just kind of the community, uh, the Las Vegas community and sports in the community at large. So, uh, it's been, it's been great. I've been in the Bay now, I think this, you know, coming up on two and a half months. So it's been great. I've appreciated the warm welcome, um, uh, from everybody here, including you guys and, and, you know, everybody, you know, in media and, and obviously with the organization and whatnot. So it's been a heck of a ride so far and, and, uh, we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens these last couple of weeks as the regular season gets ready to conclude. Yeah. I, you had me at boxing. We can talk boxing all day long. I love that about you already, but it, what, since you've covered the go to state warriors, what's your takeaway from this season, man, from watching the far and in now cover the team going on along the road. They obviously went four and one on this recent road trip, but I think a lot of fans are saying, well, you just beat San Antonio. You just beat Charlotte. We need to see you beat Dallas. So what is your impressions here as we head into the last eight regular season games? Yeah, I, I mean, I certainly think it's, uh, you know, the fact that, the, I mean, obviously not the season that anybody, I think, thought that the Warriors were going to have, right? When you when you have that kind of payroll, uh, when you have that kind of pedigree, I, I don't think the expectation from anybody is to be, you know, battling for the test seat in the play. And uh, that being said, I, I arrived um, kind of at the point where the Warriors started to turn things around. They've been pretty steady, pretty consistent for the most part since I've been on, on the beat, per se. Now, I know there's been, you know, you know some game-to-game -game inconsistencies and whatnot, but They've been, you know, since Draymond Green has returned from suspension, right? They've been pretty, pretty solid for the most part. Twenty-two and thirteen, uh, one of the better net ratings in the NBA, and and they they take care of the teams. Generally speaking, they take care of the teams they're supposed to take care of, right? They, they're beating the teams that they outclass. Uh, where they've struggled is against teams that are of a higher class, right? Of the, the you know against the better teams in the NBA, uh, a team like the Dallas Mavericks, who to play tonight, I think certainly represents that now at this point in the season with what they've. I uh, kind of been able to discover, you know, post All Star break after acquiring Daniel Gafford with the, the rhythm that you know Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving have found playing off one another. I think you know, at this juncture of the season, uh, they're playing, you know, just about as well as anybody in the Western Conference. So tonight, you know, represents a big test. But uh, you know, a lot of the big tests that the Warriors have faced, uh, you know, in my time, you know, they either they're either right there and kind of fade down the stretch, or 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 just haven't you know haven't measured up to the the, the better team. So this, uh, I think, these next couple of weeks are, are crucial. You want to. Of course, getting the dance, that's the most important thing for this team. That's obviously the priority. 
But I think a win over over a team like Dallas, uh, who they're going to see again on Friday, uh, you know, go, going they're going to have an opportunity to go into Los Angeles uh, again next week. Like racking up some of these wins against you know playoff caliber teams, teams that they're going to need to beat if they want to you know make any run. I think are, are paramount to just kind of show that they can you know they, they can compete um, at, at that level because that's what they're going to need to do again for in order to establish any kind of playoff run. They really haven't done that. And uh, tonight, I think, presents a prime opportunity to, to kind of carry some momentum over from the trip in, into a game at home. Sam, I consider myself an artist, uh, you know, a very a creative, if you will. And sometimes you get a little too close to the painting and you miss a spot. From someone on the outside looking in, what was your opinion of the Warriors before you got here? And how has that changed now that you've been around them for a couple of months? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I, I mean, you know, every I would say it, it's clear what how, the class of organization the Warriors have been. You know, that's that, that's been pretty clear from the last you know t- the decade plus, and then obviously reading you know everything from afar and just kind of learning about the way they operate. Um, you get a sense that they you know tend to do things a little differently, and that in a lot of ways is responsible for su- the success of the last ten years, right? And, and I think coming in from an outside from the outsider from an outsider's perspective coming in, I uh, definitely see that up close, just kind of the, the professionalism and the standard of the organization from, from top to bottom, uh, you know, from, from management to coaching to the players, the way, you know, I've been treated and welcomed to the, you know, the standard step and Curry steps off and off, off on and off the floor. That's all uh, been very much lines up with, with kind of uh, with, with the impression that I had, you know, before taking the job. So in a lot of ways, I don't think my, my opinion necessarily changed, right. From, from speaking from a basketball standpoint, um, the, the, before I got here, you know, the, the first half of the season was what it was. You saw the ups and downs. You saw the team play very well at stretches. You had Draymond Green's suspension. You saw the team trying to find its identity for a large part. And, and now here they are kind of battling, you know, again, like kind of like we just talked about battling now, uh, for the play and kind of strapping and, and, and trying to figure out how far this team can go. So I think even from a basketball standpoint, uh, certainly they've been better. They've played better, but a lot of it has kind of lined up with, with what I saw. Uh, before the break, uh, or before I got here as well, right? Uh, you know, right. trying to develop younger players while concurrently hanging on to uh, the, the elements that this veteran group provides and the experience that they provide. So marrying those two groups has, has certainly, I think, been a challenge at times for, for Steve Kerr. I think he's um, done, a, done, a, done a good job at, 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 at you know, at, at developing younger players, but still um, knowing when to defer to the veterans and, and letting them kind of lead the way. And the veteran group has been, I think, very accepting of Jonathan Kaminga, uh, Brandon Pajemski, Trace Jackson Davis, Moses Moody, so on and so forth, allowing them to contribute. So, lo and behold, the, the Warriors are in the position that they're in, and, and my, my impressions are very much lined up from what I you know, kind of noticed on the outside before I got here as well. In the updates on Kaminga and Clay Thompson, we know Clay Thompson was battling through some tendonitis in his knee. He did play on Sunday. He didn't have his best game, but he hit the killer three there to seal the deal. And then, of course, uh, J.K. missed the last three games. What's their updates here? Can we expect to see both of them tonight against the Dallas Mavericks? Yeah, injury report has has Clay Thompson probable, so I'd expect him to see him out. I'd expect to see him out there, and then Kaminga questionable as well. And and you have to wonder, right? It's just, it's been at the he was Kaminga so durable through the the first. I mean, you know, eighty five percent of the season played seventy of the first seventy one games, and you know he was out warming up uh, pregame in San Antonio and, and looked pretty good. He was was moving well, was getting shots up, and I think with Kaminga, it's just a case of day to day. That's you know what Steve Kerr had, had said previously in Charlotte, just a kind of a day to day injury. Um, that they're monitoring. So I'm not necessarily sure if he's going to return tonight, but I don't expect him to be out too long. Just kind of, you don't want to rush it back. The team still has a relatively good group without him. And I think any kind of run that they're going to make uh, in the postseason, he's going to you know be a crucial part of it. You want him to be as close to 100% as possible before you know, having him return to the lineup, especially with the force that, and physicality that he plays with. I can't put my finger on it, but maybe you can. What's your best reasoning on why the Warriors are struggling at home versus on the road. Because last year they were horrible on the road and good at home, if not great. And this year it's completely reversed. Uh, you know, that's a tremendous question. I've tried to find that out myself and just talking to different players about it and trying to garner perspective and and nobody um, really seems to have an answer. Maybe there's just, you know more urgency on the road this year. Maybe it's, you know, fewer distractions. The team's, you know, together. That's That's one thing that... You know, guys have said the opportunity to be a little, you know, to spend so much time together without, uh, without you know, coming from so many different places uh, at home and, and just kind of the comfort that comes w- w- at home. And, uh, you know, just, the uh, yeah, it's it's really been bizarre. That's one thing I know that has been a staple of the Warriors the last decade is how dominant they are uh, at home on the road. Their last 16, they've been, you know, 13-3. So 
it's something that they're going to have to get shored up. Uh, you'd like to see, I think, the Warriors establish a little, a little bit of a run here at home and you know, having an opportunity against the Dallas Mavericks uh, to do that in a, in a relatively big game. There's no better place to start, but, but it's been bizarre. I wish I could put my finger on it, too. I don't, I don't have... I really don't have an answer for you. It's definitely been a well, kind of a polarizing flip with how they performed um, at home compared to the road, for sure. Let's go a little off topic then, because, you know, Bonte fancies himself as someone who's extremely knowledgeable about the most random things. You said you went to the University of Minnesota? Yeah. Is Bud Grant the greatest Minnesota Golden Gopher of all time? Oh, is Bud Grant the greatest Minnesota Golden Gopher of all Drafted time? I mean, in the NBA. Young. Drafted in the NBA, played for the Lakers, and in the NFL. Why wouldn't it be Bobby Jackson? I, I mean, I don't know. A uh, nine-letter athlete coming out of you. Minnesota. He played baseball, too. Yeah, I know. But Grant's know. one of the greatest I Minnesota goals. I'm know. just asking. I'm just asking. I think uh, Dave Winfield's up there, too. You know, 3,000 hits, in, it, it, 3, hits in, in the big leagues. and He was a multi-sport athlete in Minnesota as well. Um, he did a little bit of everything. Bud Grant's on the short list. That's that's he's definitely on the short list. But I'm going to go with Dave Winfield. What about Eric Decker, <laughs> Lawrence Maroney, Barry Barber, the Here Barbarian? We go. Come on, no, those are those are the guys I grew up watching. Decker yeah. played Decker played baseball for the Gophers too, in addition right. to being a thousand yard receiver. So he was a two sport athlete there. Yeah. The Maroney Barber tandem. I, I mean, those guys were unbelievable. Uh, I grew up going to games at the Metrodome, seeing them play. A uh, thousand yard. I think they each had a thousand yards back to back. You don't see that with, with running backs in the backfield, teammates doing yeah. that. So they were that was an incredible era. For I've always, well, I've always wanted to go to Minneapolis. I heard it's a very underrated city. It's St. Well, Paul, you, Twin tell Cities, Sam, right tell there. Tell Sam the truth. What? Sam, I don't know if you know this, um, and I'm, I'm assuming truth. you're a Viking fan. Bonte, huge Kirk Cousins fan. That's Is a that lie. So? No, that hell no. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Do I sound like a Kirk Cousins Kirk guy? Cousins. <laughs> Kirk Cousins. No, no, you definitely don't. Yeah, see, there you go. The best thing to happen this offseason for the 49ers was Kirk Cousins signing with the Atlanta Falcons, so we no longer have to hear about the Kirk Cousins rumors. No longer. Oh, my gosh. I feel sorry for you, Sam, that you had to root for Kirk Cousins. Like, the biggest takeaway in the quarterback, Doc, wasn't Kirk Cousins taking America's hearts away by being such a good guy. <laughs> it was Patrick Mahomes being a damn gay on the football field 110 percent and, and look it was it was time for a clean break uh, Kirk Cousins solid six-year run uh but not a France not not the friend not a traditional franchise quarterback when you think of somebody that can have you compete for Super Bowls six-year sample size of that good luck to the Atlanta Falcons the next four years there you go hey welcome in Sam Darnold have fun with that uh Sam from <laughs> one Sam to another <laughs> Uh, they're gonna. They're, we'll see what they do in the draft. I'm expecting them to draft a quarterback. I don't think Sam Darnold's a long term answer. Just a stop gap. We'll see how that goes. All right, I can't, I can't wait to talk some boxing with you. You were out there in Las Vegas, man. Got some big fights coming up. Haney Garcia. We had a big fight weekend uh, last Saturday. So Sam, very nice debut here on the morning rolls. Get to get to know you, and I, I love you even more because. You're not a big Star Wars guy. I like my friend over here. <laughs> my friend my friend across from me is ready to kill me for these Star Wars no, things. So, no. Sam, have a good day. I'll see you later today, Chase. And I introduce myself. Oh, I appreciate, appreciate you guys. And we can talk to Sweet Science anytime. Oh. Time or place, you name it, I'm there. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love this guy, Sam Gordon, man. <laughs> I love this guy.